This week, we are testing our beta decelerator. It is a uh, thermal protection system for small spacecraft. So the goal of this technology is to be able to deliver anything in the world within 90 minutes of call up. So imagine you have an inventory in space, pre-staged, you know where everything is and where it's gonna go. And then you've got the warfighter on the ground and he needs certain things and it can change the tide of a battle. Our job is to deliver those within 100 yards of where he needs them, anywhere on the globe. We'll be dropping these articles, what we call the last mile. So from approximately four to 5,000 feet, looking at how the flight characteristics of the system work and how the recovery operations are, are done. We could design vehicles, but until you design them and then go operate them, do you start to look at the infrastructure you need to do that? We developed that architecture. We developed the communication system. We developed the data system. We developed the recording of everything. How you look at data, all of that's being defined in real time. And on top of that, we had to design the vehicle. That's only done when you do this base level testing. Today, we're gonna drop three test articles from the helicopter. Before we get these articles moved out to the runway to move on for the test, I was going to go out and double check everything, make sure that the rigging of the parachute is set up correctly, that the flotation devices are the way that, that we want them, and, and make sure our hardware is set up, because we want to get all that handled as much as we can in the controlled area in the hangar before we get it out. This is a growing piece of the satellite division at Sierra Space, as, as well as, as applications across the board in Sierra Space. So basically, uh, with, a, with kind of a dish-shaped heat shield like this, uh, you have a lot of instability right around zero angle of attack. By adding weight a little bit to this side, we actually pull our CG and our uh, angle of attack a little bit to one side, and we kind of dig the rudder in uh, to the airflow and uh, pull the nose up more like, a, like an airfoil. When you begin steering it and you have uh, actual flight dynamics, that lets you understand how stable it's going to be. It lets you know when you input a control measurement uh, what's actually going to happen. So there's a lot of gains there for having both the shape and the, uh, the weight offset. Before we do any drops, actually, we do streamer passes to verify the winds, and we're going to verify two different factors. We're going to see where we think it's going to land short and where we think it's going to land long. The first one is going to be just a terminal drop uh, test article is what kind of we're referring to it because it doesn't have any parachute or anything. So it'll be dropped from a lower altitude, and it's just going to go down and hit the ground. The idea there is just to, to get a little bit better understanding of uh, how this vehicle, uh, how hard it'll hit the ground and what that would do to the payload. So when the first drop happened, it, we saw some tumbling in the vehicle, some little bit of unstable flight. We got on the radios and said, let's hold off before uh, dropping this next unit and, and let's make some changes. The next unit would be the same single piece unit that does have a parachute and we'll try to target the landing, see what the, the flight dynamics are like and what the speeds are like under that size parachute. And that's actually going to occur at 4,000 feet. So we're going to drop it at 4,000. At about 2,000 feet, the parachute should come out and it should land safely on the ground. The last article is a uh, separable unit. So for that test article, we're going to separate the shield portion from the bus portion so that we can uh, demonstrate more of a payload return capability where the, the shield has done its job coming through the atmosphere and, and it is no longer needed. So when the parachute activates, it's going to separate the shield away and then we'll get the payload coming down on the parachute. Today was a huge success for us. Um, not that every drop went perfectly, and I think it's more of a success because the drops didn't all go perfectly. When you fail, when you have little issues, that's when you grow the most. And so we, we learned a ton about some of the things that do go well and some of the things that don't go well. We're able to make those adjustments. Today's test, the main objective obviously was to ensure that we can get a stable flight, especially in subsonic region. So we have some methods that we can scale this up to a hypersonic flight. And I have no doubt that Sierra Space is going to lead the industry because of the outside the box thinking. They are able to conduct an operation like this at this magnitude safely, successfully, and, uh, and they're willing to learn from their mistakes. So uh, it's, it's been a pleasure working with Sierra Space. When you look at what Sierra Space does, we're not a launch company. We're a launch vehicle agnostic. We're a space company. We're, and part of that is a logistics company. So we need to be the guys 
on the third side of that logistics train. There's launch, on orbit, and return. This technology puts us into the game of return. And this is how we change the game is through technologies like these.